tell me your name. My name is Laquita Howe. Okay, and how old are you? I'm 18. All right. Tell me your story. Um, well, I can start. I've been in foster care twice. It's been approximately, what, 14 years in all. First, when I was younger, at two, I got out when I was six. And second, I went back in when I was 13, got out when I was 18. Did you go back to your biological parents? Um, I started with my mom. I went back. I was released into my mom's care. And um, later on, around 12, I went into custody to my grandma. And why were you put in foster care? Do you want to tell me? Um, the first time, I have no idea. I have no clue whatsoever. I hear stories. My mom would tell me because our neighbors didn't like her and they made complaints about her leaving the doors unlocked. Um, and then I heard another one about, I really don't know, I can't remember that one. But it was like, I'm not really sure, because sometimes you know you can't really believe everything your parents tell you. Um, the second time I was placed into foster care was because my grandma wasn't able to take care of me. Right. And that was at what age? Um, approximately 13. A little after my 13th birthday. And, and have you been in foster care since then? Uh, yes. I just recently was emancipated. Oh, okay. Now, did you do that? You went to the to the state and, and asked to be emancipated? Yes, I did. I did it. Um, it was a fight, but at the end of the thing, they emancipated me. And how does that make you feel? It makes me nervous. Um... Uh, it's like it's something I wanted but didn't at the same time. It, um, but I'm also glad I got it done with because to me it feels like all I was doing is prolonging the time it would take me to learn things on my own. And now here I get to actually do everything I need on my own. It's no longer running to job and family services or not even running. Someone I can't. I'm 18 and I would still have to get certain permissions from job and family services to do things. And it was like I was kind of getting tired of it. And so it's kind of good now I don't have to tell my school, you have to contact somebody down at Job and Family Services for me to go on a field trip. Or, oh, you need this information, you have to contact Job and Family Services. So, I mean, that part is like kind of out of the way, which makes me really relaxed. Right, because you, you're living your life for yourself now. Yes. Now, so you got emancipated, so you didn't necessarily age out. No. You said, I want out. Yes. And... Were you with a foster family? No, I was residing in independent living where I was staying in my own apartment. Okay. And at what age did you go there? Um, a little after my 17th birthday. Right. And so, um, were you ever placed with a foster family? Uh, yes. Most of my time in foster care was in a foster family home. And just one time I stayed in a group home. Right. I stayed in approximately maybe I think it was like four or five different homes. Yeah. And um, most of them were females. Uh, my first home was actually with my older sisters. I had to live with them for a while, and that was the, I think the only home I stayed in that had a father figure in the household, and it also had two adopted kids in the household. And um, I think that was that was the first foster home I had been to, my second time in there. So it was the one I can remember. Like, as a younger girl, I can't really remember what foster home I had been to or how many I was in when I was younger. I can remember one home, but that was pretty much it. But that was my first home coming into foster care, and it kind of what kick-started a very bad term in my life. Right, right. So, looking at your life, um, was there someone that made a difference for you that cared about you? Yes. Um... I say it first started when I first was going into foster care, not when I was in, but right before I got in. It was my teacher at um, the elementary school I was going to. It's, this is where I was saying I played basketball at. And at the time, it was just me and my sister, and we lived with our grandmother. And I played a lot of sports, and nobody would ever show up to any of my games besides my teacher. And... um when I start first, when my, my grandma first started getting into these arguments and uh, me being kicked out the house, she would come and ask me how was I getting home, or she would actually bother. Like it seemed like she actually cared. She would drive me. I was staying with my stepfather for a while because I couldn't go live with my grandmother. She would drive me down because my stepfather lived in a, um, what we consider a really bad neighborhood here in Cincinnati, 
And so she would want to make sure I was safe. So she would actually drive me home after my basketball games and after school to make sure I got home. And she actually bought me food before and she would take me out. And she just did like extraordinary things to me that teachers just normally and still don't even do to this day. Yeah. And after that, once I was in foster care, I eventually got into church. And my um, since, since then, my church family has helped me a whole lot. Um, my best friend Jessica is just outstanding. And um, I made a few friends while in care. One of my friends that I still speak to today has also helped a lot. Yeah, yeah. And so is your teacher still in your life? No. She had... Um, after being placed into foster care and I had transferred schools since it was emergency placement, I, I lost all contact with everyone. And um, when I finally got um, back in contact with the school that I went to, they had told me she retired and confidential reality it couldn't tell me where she was living or give me any information on her. Yeah. So I've never heard from her since then though. Yeah. Would you like to? I would love to. I would really love to. I miss her and I just, I never really... I always had a problem with thanking people, and so I never really actually got to thank her for what she had did for me. Like, it was like showing up to my best couple games may seem little, little to some people, but to me it was like the biggest thing because we had a game which was a, a Mother's and Father's Day game, and I mean I literally hid under the bleaches during it because I wouldn't come out and play the game. Like the game was held up because I wouldn't come and play. I was, I was our star leading forward, and I wouldn't come out and play the game. So they would actually postpone the whole game. And, to, and my teacher actually came down here and spoke with me, and she just gave me the encouragement it took to actually come out and play my game because all my years of playing sports, no one ever returned up to my games. And when my sister played sports, my grandma actually made it out to her games, but she had never made it to any of my games. And so for my teacher to actually come out to my away games, my home games, it was like really outstanding and I just really appreciated her for that. Yeah, yeah. That was a nice thing. But that was, um, that must have been very hard. Yeah, it is. I mean, even now when I play sports, people don't, I still don't get a lot of people don't come out to my games. My best friend came to a few games. Like my friends would come, but still I don't get family members don't come out and support my games. And it was just like, and I still just to this day, I think about her every time I go to a game and I feel that, that sadness coming on to me and I look out into the bleachers and I'm like, all these people are out here cheering for me and no one knows me. It's always go number 11 or something like that. And I'm looking like no one ever shouts my name. And it's always, you hear everybody, that's my baby and all that. But I never get to hear that play in any sport. And when she came to that game and she was like, oh, that's my student. Or she yelled out my name. It was just like amazing. Yeah. It just was so special to me, and I never thanked her for it. Yeah. I bet we could find her. Yeah. Uh, I bet we could find her. You know her name, right? Yes. She's probably on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, she was an outstanding teacher. She's overly qualified for the, um, her teaching, and she stayed at our school, though. Yeah. And it was really, I was just like, I, I never understood her why she did it, and she was just like, it's better here than some up snotty school, she always said, and I was like, wow. Yeah. You seem like, I, I bet you have someone that you're inspiring. You have someone. I hope so. I, I, um, I have sisters and brothers, eight of us, and I've always looked and hoped that um, maybe I inspire my sisters to try better, because in my, I mean, we have all my sisters, I'm the third oldest, and no offense to my family, but it just seemed like us, the older sisters, we just don't, we're not leading in the right direction. And so with me turning around, I just hope it shows my younger sisters that just because we start in one direction don't mean we have to keep going. Yeah. And um, I've heard people tell me, they, I inspire people. Um, my church tell me, kids in my church ask me all the time. I've helped a young lady with her application to... Um, the School of Performing Arts. I um, drew a mural on my church wall, and she was like, "I'm. I want. Can you help me?" And I'm like, "Help you? I'm not an artist. I'm not a professional." And she's like, "Yeah." And I was like, "I. I, I couldn't turn her down." So it doesn't matter. She just wanted but, you to be there, didn't she? Yeah, and it was just very. It was. Just, 
it touched me all the time. It's like, wow, she actually, like, I have kids come up to me all the time, ask me for help drawing, or um, I do a poetry club, and it's like, go listen to this poem I wrote. And it was just like, wow, these kids are actually coming to me. Like, I would come to someone else that's older than me, like, look at what I did. And it just reminds me, it's like, I never really had that person in my life that I could run to and be like, look at this, what I drew, or look what I did. And I get these kids, like, literally get their parents they run me first like oh god look at this look i got an a on this and i was like you sure your mom not yet i want to show you first and i'm like oh you guys are gonna show your mom <laughs> yeah. and that's like it is just like i mean and then, then they see their faces and they be so happy and if i tell them like i suggest something to them they'll go and practice it and be like i did, I did it look look and i was like wow like it's just like inspiring and just to keep me doing what i do best yeah what would you put in an orange duffel bag for a kid that was aging out? Um, what would I put in an orange duffel bag? I don't know. How big is a duffel bag? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would put, I would put a paper, a piece of paper, and it would just simply ask them, what do they want to be? Ask them, what would their goals and how they plan to achieve it? And then, uh, would put whatever would be their favorite thing. If it's a blanket, a shoe, whatever something they hold valuable to them into that bag too. What do you hold valuable? Um, to me, actually, it's weird. I hold shoes of value. It it started when I was a little girl. It's part of the, the thing that caused me to want to be a model. I'm a, I was the tallest girl, still the tallest person in my family. And um, I got my first pair of shoes, which sounds weird when I was like six or something. My first own pair of shoes. Like before, I always got shoes that was passed down from my sisters and stuff. Like I never actually got to go and pick out my own pair of shoes. My stuff, everything I had was always hand-me-downs. And the problem with that was I was taller than my sisters. I was bigger than my sisters, so all my stuff was small. And I think the first time someone ever in our, um, ever came to my mom was like, I want to buy her something. I don't, I don't, I know you have other kids, but that's the one I want to get. And it was a pair of shoes. And um, I now people spend fifty hundred dollars on shoes. I spend thirty dollars on shoes, and people compliment me all the time. I always get compliments on all my heels that I have. They're like, Oh, them are so nice. And I was like, got them for fifteen dollars. They're looking at me like I'm crazy. And it's just like shoes with the shoes I can show an expression. I can be sexy, I can be smart, I can be sporty, I can be anything with my shoes. And everybody will notice it. And it's not like I have to have a huge sign, I have, I don't have to have expensive, expensive clothes and stuff. My shoes, like, they talk for me. They tell me where I'm going. And not necessarily where I come from, but where I'm going, like... I use my heels are always extraordinary. They're always something different. Whenever I go to look for a pair of heels, I look for shoes that I know somebody else might not have. I never want to get shoes I see other people with. Not on purpose. Not because it's like, oh, I don't want them. I'm too good for them. It's just simply, my shoes are me. So I want my uniqueness to be shown through my shoes. Like, it's like, I, I love to give them away. I give them to my sisters, friends, and families, people I see. So they're taking you someplace positive with yes, these shoes. Yes, definitely. I like it. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. It even sparks up like Easter. I bought a pair of plain shoes. Once again, I don't like plain things, so I had to do something. For Easter, I, um, my sister, I got, I don't wear jewelry, so some friends of mine had bought me some necklaces and earrings. I didn't wear them, and I didn't want to just not wear them, so I actually put them on my shoes. Yeah. And I got so many compliments from them, and friends were looking like it. Tell them those are so pretty. And it was like, no, nah, that's just an earring and necklace. And these people were looking at me like, you're crazy. I was like, no, that really is an earring and necklace. I'll take it off the shoe and show you. And it just like just shows me how much potential is in my world. And, and it just leads me to know I have somewhere I can go with it. Yeah. And, it, and I mean, shoes are just what's going to take me. I need them on my feet every time. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I really appreciate you talking to me. You're welcome. And, uh. And um, we'll, we'll see where those shoes take you. <laughs> I think it's going to be a good place. Thank you.